Edo period. Years that marked the history of an entire nation. In Japan, the feudal era is known as the Edo period, or Edo Jidai. This covers from 1603 to 1868, and would establish a very remarkable structure of changes for the Japanese country, that until today is considered very emblematic. This period was developed during the rule of the Tokugawa, or better known in Japan as Tokugawa Shogunati. This period of government officially began on March 24, 1603. The first to take power was Tokugawa Ayasu, who was the first shogun. This title was given to the commanders of the Japanese army, and it was the emperor who granted it. And he wielded so much power that he controlled the entire nation. The Edo period lasted through the years until 1868, when the last shogun, or military dictator, Tokugawa Yoshinobu, completely restored the imperial government, and was known as the Meiji Restoration at that time. A mandate of power begins. The daimyo in Japan is the governor or sovereign of a region, which is his domain or property and has great power, both economic and military. The daimyo Ayasu Tokugawa, established in the Edo region, today known as Tokyo, had a very large area of Japan, but for him, it was not enough. For that reason, he began a battle against the other daimyo in order to have control of the lands further west. This battle was called the Battle of Segigahara and took place in the year 1600 in what is now known as Gifu Prefecture, which thanks to the power he had, was the winner and consolidated with all the lands of the West for the year 1603. Noting the military power he obtained by then, the Emperor named him Shogun, and since then began the Edo period. At that time, Japan was represented by two main figures of authority, the Emperor in the first place, and the Shogun in second place. The Shogun had the general mandate, but despite his great power, he respected the decisions and political opinions issued by the emperor, who took the last word, especially in controversial actions. A new era that revolutionized Japan. His mandate began with the implementation and imposition of very precise laws for the daimyo, regulating all aspects of their public and political life regulating more than regional interests, but also specifics on who to marry, what clothes they should wear, and even the number of troops they could possess. The main purpose of all this was to maintain control and power. Although these were important changes, they were accompanied by great ideas that revolutionized Japan from ancient times and greatly influenced the great nation it is today. This period marked a remarkable social, political, and economic change in the entire region, where foreign trade, culture, and respect for their religion were encouraged. The Edo period and its foreign trade strategy. Foreign trade was boosted during this period, with Europe and China being the main partners, which with the help of their first transatlantic ships were able to carry out favourable commercial exchanges. Such was the success that it was necessary to establish the first Japanese embassy in territories such as America and Europe. However, this did not last long, because in 1636, Japan had to make the decision to isolate itself to avoid the power of Christianity and the dominion of the Spanish monarchy. Although it closed foreign trade with major partners, it maintained affluence with countries such as England, China, and the East India Company. Although this was an important change in the country's economy, it also had an influence on the social level, since severe measures were taken in society. An example of this was that foreigners and mestizos were expelled from Japan, and natives were forbidden to leave the country, and if they did, they would be denied entry. 
education and culture as the foundations of a new era. In a great nation like Japan, it's not difficult to think that they took education as the basis for the strengthening of all their knowledge. Areas such as natural sciences, medicine, geography were studied through books, marketed by the Dutch. This knowledge was the starting point for the development of their own currents, such as Wasan, a branch of mathematics totally different from that of the Western world. However, it was Neo-Confucianism that was the most relevant intellectual development. This philosophy, which was practiced by Buddhist clerics, took hold in the 17th century and would contribute to the national system of learning at the time, called Kokugaku. At this point, a perfect balance was found between religion as a spiritual point and humanism. On the other hand, during commercial isolation, there was a great strengthening of culture in Japan. Since there were no foreign forms of entertainment, the Japanese began to devise new forms of entertainment and art, known as ukiyo. The ukiyo represented a set of artistic expressions, such as poetry, music, and the emblematic geisha. This great movement exalted popular stories and made it transcend in time as well as theatre such as Bunkari, characterised by puppets and which was one of the most representative arts of the nation. Religion The exponential growth of Christianity globally and regionally was considered a threat to the new social order, which is why any movement associated with Christianity was eradicated, destroying temples, prohibiting religious preaching, and many of the converts or missionaries were executed. By that time, Buddhism was established as the only religious movement and traditional temples were erected on top of the old Christian temples. This new imposition would bring with it traditions and festivities so deeply rooted in Japanese traditions that today it's considered part of their identity. End of the Samurai the samurai belonged to 5% of the Japanese population, which represented a military elite that lived under a code of honour called Bushido. During the Edo period, they were displaced and given two options, among them to lay down their weapons and start working the land as peasants, or to be servants of the daimyo. Although there was a rebellion of samurai and peasants, they did not succeed marking the end of a social class that prevailed in power. The former samurai settled near the daimyo's castles, many of them under the orders of a feudal lord, thus protecting their lands. Influence of the Edo period on the present day. Although more than 150 years have passed since the Edo period ended, Japanese society still maintains its influence in a lively way. One of the most relevant is the respect for the Neo-Confucianist philosophy, where the social strata are hierarchized and the values of humanism and humility are exalted. This philosophy has maintained a balance between religion and culture in general, and most conversationists defend this way of living. However, not only that is maintained over the years, as it is well known that culture is deeply rooted in this emblematic period and that the theatre and other arts are an important symbol of Japan. For 250 years, Japan remained stable and prosperous with the Edo period, which served to lay the foundations of its national identity. The exponential growth of its culture, education and strengthening of its religion has been maintained until the end of its days and can be evidence today. If you liked the video about one of the most important periods in the history of Japan, I encourage you to participate in the comments by asking what other period, dynasty or empire you would like to have on the channel. Don't close the video yet? Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and keep making much more content. Now, without further ado, 
we say goodbye. <laughs>